Hello. Last week, judges in the Court of Appeal quashed the convictions of 39 former postmasters. These men and women were convicted of stealing money, with some imprisoned, after the post office installed the flawed Horizon computer system in branches. The clearing of their names follows the overturning of six other convictions in December, and this means that more people have been affected than in any other miscarriage of justice in the UK. It's therefore been described as the biggest, most widespread miscarriage of justice in British legal history. This complex legal battle has hung as a dark cloud for over 20 years. For the families, the human cost has been truly devastating. Marriages breaking down, people lost their homes, their health declined, leading in some cases to premature death and reputations were destroyed. Many said publicly that the suffering was hellish. One response to the verdict last week was, I will never forgive them. These words were spoken by Karen Wilson, the widow of Julian Wilson, who she said died a broken man. Julian had to spend 300 hours doing community service as the punishment for the crime he was wrongly accused of. Now, it has been said that justice has now been done. And indeed, clearing one's name goes some way towards reparation. But it doesn't bring back the lost years, the fractured relationships and the emotional and financial pain. As yet, no one's been held accountable. And so it's not perhaps accurate to report that justice has been done. It seems to me that justice is far more elusive than a verdict or the correction of a legal wrong. There is the question of holding people and the institution accountable. The chief executive of the post office between 2012 and 2019 was Paula Venels. The computer problems began before her time as chief executive, but under her leadership, the glitches within the system were widely reported on. She insisted, however, that the system was robust, defending the technology and her organization's actions to a committee of MPs. In a civil court case against the post office in December 2020, the judge said that under her leadership, the actions of the post office had been both cruel and incompetent. Now, last week, following the Court of Appeal case, she quit her roles on the boards of Morrison and Dunnell. But more surprising to me, who had never heard of her beforehand, is that she's also an ordained Church of England minister and is stopping her duties in that realm as well. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the prophet Micah writes, the Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Many of the prophets in the Old Testament spoke out against corruption and injustice in the society of their day because this is something that God hates. The way we treat each other is seen by Christians as a true mark of commitment to God. Last week, Miss Venel said that she was deeply saddened by the sub postmaster's accounts. She's also said that she would cooperate with the government inquiry. Therefore, for me to judge her without knowing the facts would be unjust. However, the judge in the 2020 case said that she, Miss Venels, was faced with a moral choice and she took the wrong one. The one which allowed hundreds of sub postmasters to be falsely accused, humiliated and ruined by the organisation she ran. The continual pursuit of justice in our lives makes a very high demand. The moral responsibility of speaking up if you're a witness to a wrongdoing requires courage and emotional strength. It's often the hardest thing that we do. But like love, it can be what inspires a meaningful life. I pray that in our family relationships, our friendships, and especially our working life, we might listen to the prophet Amos, who writes, let justice and fairness flow like a river that never runs dry.